Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're back. Mitch behind the cameras. It's uh, it's time for the cranks on the on the giraffe bike. I worked on these a while ago and then I got stalled out because I didn't have the taps because the pedals have to go in and there's a left hand tap and there's a right hand tap and it's left one's left hand thread and it's also an odd size. It's 20 threads per inch, whereas I think standard is 18. That would be national fine, 9 16 So I went online and I, well, first of all, I got a quote locally and uh, man, was it ever a lot. Uh, it came to $300 for both taps. The right hand tap was 85 and the left hand tap was 185 so you add taxes on you're at $300 and change. I went online this is the story I want to tell you I went online and I found I went to eBay and out of out of China I thought I was getting a couple of taps because in the in the listing it says right left hand so I, I made the assumption that I was getting two taps. And so I paid my money. I paid $13, which includes shipping. And I waited, I think, seven weeks, and I got one tap. And I thought, that's kind of strange that they would ship the taps in separate packages. So I, I waited another couple weeks, and then I went online, and I saw, OK, it does say right, left, but you have to choose. Don't make the assumption that you're getting both taps. So I had one tap now went online and I found this one. It's, it's from the USA, so it's probably a good quality. It came to $32.54. And, and then my, friends, my friend Simon stopped by and he had a couple taps all along. I just didn't know it. So that's my tap story for you. We're gonna go over to the mill. You can see the shape in the in the felt pen here, what I want to do. So I, yesterday I made up this because this is going to go like that. Can you see the red felt pen marks? I need to get a half inch end mill in there so I can mill that. I'm going to set the vise at an angle. I got four. I got four to do. I got two cranks, so there's a top and a bottom. And first of all, we're going to drill the hole and use the taps and see how they work. Let's go to the mill and we'll set the vise up. I'm going to have a stop here so that they're both exactly the same length. You can see here how I moved the hole because I, I did this wrong at first. These pieces are not quite the same length. Anyway, that's the right location right there and there. Let's go to the mill. Thanks for tuning in. I checked the tap drill size and it's a little over half an inch. So I'm, I'm going to drill under size. This is 30, 31 64ths. It's under half inch. And then I'm going to use a boring bar to get the exact size. Go a little slower here. I'll try 700 RPM. That seems to cut pretty nicely. Maybe it's a sharp drill. It's cutting well. Oh. All right, the moment of truth here, a Chinese tap. I'm gonna 
operate the mill. I'll, I'll switch it on. I'll let it be up at speed and then I'll switch it off and then I'll plunge down. And that, that'll get the tap started and then I'll do the rest by hand, okay? So let's see what happens here. Testing out a tap that I've never used before. Oh, that, that, that's a sharp tap. That cut really nicely. Wow. Usually what happens is it spins in the chuck. This, this one didn't do that at all. It's my $13 tap. Yeah, it's sharp. It's really, it's cutting very nicely because this is that 954 bronze. And if you don't have a sharp tool, it doesn't matter if you're drilling, cutting, turning, whatever, it does not want to go very well. And this tap is just, I'd give it a 10 out of 10. Okay, so the next one is a left-hand thread. Oh, okay. I've got a left-hand tap, left-hand tap, so I'm gonna spin this backwards, and then we'll plunge down, okay? That seemed to cut quite well, too. I would give this tap a 9.5. It's not quite as sharp as the Chinese one, but it's still working just fine, so. What I'm gonna do now is on the outside, I'm gonna, I've got a, a ball end mill. It's a 5 8 ball end mill. I'm gonna make a groove right down the center line because I got the vise all set up. This is centered. So that's an easy time for me to do that. I'm gonna do a little bit of figuring out right, right here on the mill. So there's the size of the The end, it's an inch, like that. And this line translates over to here. This is this is where the end mill is gonna go to. So I think we wanna go from here to, might go a little bit more. Like maybe to there. It's an eyeball thing. This saves a little weight, but it, it's for cosmetics mainly, just to have a an extra machine line in there. Let's see what happens here. I can't plunge because end mills don't work like that. So I'm just, I'm going back and forth and I'm ramping down. That's what I'm doing. So I'm, I'm looking for the width. And it doesn't have to be super wide, but Let's try that, let's try that.
On the right hand side, I've got a hole here and it goes almost all the way through. So I cannot start at the same spot. I have to start back a little bit. So we'll just make a mark where we go to. So we can go to right there. What I'm going to do here, I've got the vise loosened up. Can you see how I can move it? So what I'm going to do is to put the ruler on top, I'm going to line up the ruler with the felt pen mark like that. And then I'm going to move the table and I'm going to eyeball the ruler and the slots in the table. That's how I know that more or less I'm lined up. And to me, that looks pretty good there. I mean, if it's off a quarter of a degree, doesn't matter. So that's, that's how I line things up sometimes. If I don't have to be super, super accurate. It is just a crank arm after all. So the block goes in like that. You see how this is working? Yeah. If you remember that the table is at an angle, then it all makes sense. Let's see what it's like to cut this with a half inch chain mill. A little bit of smoke. That looks pretty good. Just needs a little sanding and polishing. Be, will be just fine. All right, so what I have to do now is to mill this. This is gonna be on a, on a taper. See how this is on a taper? Well, this has to be, this is, this is the front. That's what faces out anyway. And then here, it's gonna be a little bit of a taper coming down like that. Because I still have these. This is still a rectangle on each end so I can hold it. So I'm leaving this part here so that I can put it into the, in, into the into the rotary table with the chuck, hold that, and then I can mill a circle, an arc. And it just fits on to the height blocks, just. That's what it looks like. I think it's looking fine. It's warm. So it needs sanding, smoothing. All the corners have to be radius, but looks okay to me.
And I think we're going to call it good right there. That's basically what the crank looks like. Needs a little bit of sanding and polishing, but I'm happy with it. Nothing went terribly wrong. Thanks for watching. Mitch and I like coffees. If you buy us some coffees, much appreciated. Please like, subscribe, and tell your friends. See you next time.